Hello and welcome back to Theatre Beard, the YouTube channel for students of drama, theatre and the performing arts, or for anybody who's just got a bit of an interest and would like to learn a little bit more. You came to the right place. I'm so glad that you could join me for this video all about Brecht. However, it's going to be slightly different to the one about Stanislavski because I'm actually going to deliver it into two parts. There's going to be two separate videos. The reason being is because I had a bit of feedback to say that it might be a bit too long to do it all in one go. So there's going to be this video now, which is all about his life, epic theatre and the V effect. And then there'll be a second video, which is going to be to do with techniques, how you can apply those to your own work and the reasons behind them. So to make sure that you don't miss that video or any of the other future ones that are coming up on the channel, make sure that you subscribe. So let's get started with Bertolt Brecht. Playwright and theatre practitioner Bertolt Brecht was born in 1898 in the German town of Augsburg. He studied medicine and also took classes in drama, and when the First World War broke out he served as a medical orderly, which gave him first-hand experience of the horrors of war. After the First World War he first moved to Munich and then to Berlin in pursuit of a career in the theatre and eventually in 1924 he became an apprentice to another director called Max Reinhardt. Later in the 1920s he began working with a director called Erwin Piscator who was an expressionistic theatre director. He was a big fan of using all the available technologies to him that were around at the time such as huge scaffolding towers and lots and lots of projections. Piscata created performances that were overtly political, so they wanted to deliver a message, they wanted to change people's minds about the political situations that were happening at that time. And it was this style of theatre that Brecht took and combined with things like cabaret and silent films to create epic theatre. And it was during this period, in the late 1920s, when he created his probably most famous and most successful work, The Three Penny Opera. Moving into the 1930s, Brecht created a performance called The Rise and Fall of Mahogany, which caused uproar for its depiction of unstable governments, corrupt politicians and economic disaster. And it sounds like we are due a revival, what with everything that's happening at the moment. That particular piece was so controversial that there were people in the Nazi party in the audience and they protested about that piece. So in 1933, when the Nazis came to power in Germany, Brecht knew that this was no longer a safe place for him. So he fled the country and the Nazis removed his German citizenship. So he was a stateless person. He didn't have a country that he belonged to. He spent a little bit of time in Prague, in Zurich and in Paris. And eventually he accepted an invitation to move to Denmark. Then, in 1939, when World War II was just on the horizon, he feared for his safety once again, and so he fled to Sweden and stayed there for a whole year. Eventually, Hitler invaded Sweden's neighbours, Norway and Denmark, and so fearing for his safety again, he fled to Helsinki in Finland, where he lived until 1941, and he waited for a visa to be able to move to the United States of America. Brecht lived in the United States of America until 1947, after he was brought up in front of the House Un-American Activities Committee. This was when Senator McCarthy led the charge to get rid of any trace of communism in America. Reds under the beds and all that stuff. And if you've studied Arthur Miller's play The Crucible, this will all sound very familiar to you. So Brecht headed back to Germany and settled in East Germany with his wife Helena Weigel and they set up the Berliner Ensemble. And it was this theatre company that would perform his work and also allow him to experiment with his theories and his ideas about how performances should be made, how they should look, what stories they should tell and how the audience should feel. Or rather think. Having lived through such a period of political turmoil and personal upheaval, it's little wonder that he came out of that time with very strong political views and needed to create a really dynamic theatre style to be able to express those opinions. And that brings us on to epic theatre, which is the name given to the style of theatre used by Brecht. So, just like realism and naturalism came as a response to the romantic period in theatre, Epic theatre was a response to realism and naturalism. When naturalistic theatre was at its height, it was referred to as a mirror reflecting society, whereas Brecht wanted to use it as a tool to shape society. 
In naturalistic theatre, it was designed so that the audience would feel and care about the characters on stage. They could forget their own lives for a while and escape into the world of these characters and worry about them for a change. Audiences were supposed to get lost in their stories and care deeply about the characters and what happened to them. And when an audience member cries or feels the emotion that the characters on stage are feeling, this is called catharsis. Brecht was completely against cathartic theatre. He believed that the moment an audience member cared too deeply about the characters on stage or got too emotionally involved in their stories, they lost the ability to think about it and to make a judgement. Brecht wanted to use theatre as a force for change in the world and therefore he needed his audiences to think about what was going on on stage. And he famously said that audiences at naturalistic performances hang up their brains along with their hats and coats at the cloakroom. Brecht wanted his audience members to remain objective, distant and emotionally removed from the action taking place on stage. This would allow them to make judgments about the social commentary and the social issues that were being presented in his plays. And his approach to achieving this was to put reminders in the performance itself that the audience were watching a performance. They weren't watching real life. Real life was what naturalistic theatre was all about. Brecht's epic theatre was to remind people that everything that they're seeing is a performance. It's fake. It's not real. Brecht's theatre was known as epic theatre and the techniques that he used to distance the audience from the emotional involvement of the story is known as the Verfremdens effect. Which brings us on nicely to the next section which is all about the Verfremdens effect also known as the V effect. I'm going to be calling it the V effect from now on so I don't have to say Verfremdens effect ever again. Now, you might have heard of the V effect before, and you may have heard people refer to it as alienating the audience, which seems like quite a strange thing to do, particularly if you don't know what the word alienating means. Alienating basically means to keep separate. However, the translation of Verfremdens effect, I forgot about that one, is actually a lot closer to the word distancing. So Brecht is distancing the audience from the emotional action of the performance. Brecht definitely wanted his audience to remain interested and engaged with the action that was taking place on stage. He just wanted to prevent them from getting too emotionally involved. Otherwise, they wouldn't be able to think and make a judgment on those political and social issues that he was presenting to them. So it's really important that we remember it's that emotional investment that Brecht was trying to avoid. So because epic theatre is designed to make people think, it's really well suited to stories that are political or about social issues or stories with a moral message. It might be that you're creating a performance about a particular issue and you want to make the audience consider all the different sides of that argument. So, for example, you could create a performance based around the idea of lockdown and whether that was the right political decision to make by the government. There might be some characters who completely think that it was the correct thing to do and, in fact, that the lockdowns came a little bit late in the day. There might be people who are really worried about the economic impact of lockdown and people being furloughed and people not being at work. And you would explore all of those different political viewpoints within the same performance but you would have to stop the audience from getting emotionally involved to allow them to consider all these different parts of the argument and different viewpoints. So in summary, the theatre of realism and naturalism, the theatre of Stanislavski, was all about getting the audience to feel, whereas the theatre of Brecht, epic theatre, is getting the audience to think. In the theatre of naturalism, the fourth wall is very much in and the audience are almost peering through that invisible wall into the world of the characters and getting emotionally involved in their stories and they can switch their brains off for a while and get carried away. In epic theatre, the theatre of Brecht, that fourth wall is broken and the audience are active members in the theatrical experience and they're encouraged to think throughout and not switch their brains off. There are a number of strategies and techniques that Brecht would use to distance the audience and I'm going to be talking about some of those distancing devices in the next video. So thank you for watching this one. I hope it's given you some context to epic theatre and Brecht's performance style and also some of the content of his work. Don't forget to share this video, tell your friends about it. Don't forget to subscribe. Check out the next video 
all about those strategies and saying nice things is always free, so feel free to pop something in the comments. I'll see you in the next video. And distant and remote, remotionally? Politics, social issues, or maybe um, storals, storals? and techniques that Breck would... Breck?